What's up guys, it's me Chris and I hope you're having a great day. In this video we're going to be taking a look at my brand new car, well new to me at least. Uh, it is my 2011 Camaro SS. It's a 2 SS and it is an automatic with the L99 motor. I'm going to talk to you about why I decided to go with this specific option and why I decided to go with this specific car at this time. And if it's still even relevant with so many amazing muscle cars and fast cars out there that you can purchase in 2020. Stick around, this is a video you definitely won't want to miss. I'm excited. So I hope you are as well. So when I decided to go on a car search, I wasn't really sure what I wanted. Uh, I knew I wanted something different than what I had had in the past. Now, I've had a lot of foreign cars. I've had Honda Preludes, I've had Honda Civics, I've had Infiniti G35s, I've had Z cars. I had a lot of different things in the past, and it's really been a while since I had something that was more performance oriented. Uh, the last time that I had a car that was performance oriented would have been 2013. And so I had an itch that I was wanting to scratch, and my wife and and I got together, we sold my one of my little smaller cars that I was riding around in, which was an amazing 2004 Acura TSX, and I had a few dollars saved up, so I decided I, now was the time to go ahead and buy something. Uh, we decided on two body styles, if you will. Uh, I was going to either go with a C5 Corvette or I was going to go with a Gen 5 Camaro. Um, I definitely wanted a V8, and then from there I really didn't know an, enough about them. So I started to do a little bit of research and I start to look around I'm in Georgia and I found this specific car right here uh, this car is a 2011 and it is a Camaro SS it is a 2 SS so it has the updated trim package and it's a really cool car I wanted to get something that I could outright buy the other thing that I thought I think was very important is mileage I wanted something that was under hundred thousand miles I wanted a V8 and I needed something that was an automatic because my wife cannot drive a five speed. The body's pretty straight. There are a few little things that need to be fixed, but all in all, I think it's a, a pretty awesome find. And the price was fair. Uh, I would have liked to have paid a little less, but under the circumstances, um, I'm happy with what we have. So I do want to show you around the car because I know you're like, shut up, Chris, let's get to the car. But I just want to talk about what my goals are with this car and really where you can help me. Um, I really don't know what I want to do at this point. I do want to make at least 550 wheel horsepower with this car and I want to do it with the L99. And I want to do it because a lot of people don't. I am going to do the VVT delete and a few other things to it. And I'm going to go with some, some headers and a cam and a lot of those other things. And I'm going to take you along on that journey. But I really want this to be a daily driver. And I want to be in that 500 to 550 horsepower range. Um, I think that's more than reasonable for how I plan to use this car. And I think that that's still pretty solid power gains. And so that's kind of what I'm looking for. And hopefully we can get to that that point. Let's start on the inside. The inside of this car is really clean. There's, like I said, there's no check engine lights. We do have a, a TPMS light on that we're going to be working on hopefully very soon. But one of the things that I really liked about this car was how amazingly clean it was. It is the 2SS package, so you also have a lot of leather going on with it as well. The retro style is one of those things that you can take or leave. Um, I personally like the gauges being by the shifter, but there are some things that I'm going to change, like the radio. We are going to upgrade that. Otherwise, it's really dialed in. It gives you that cockpit kind of feel, like you're in a fighter jet because the window lines are so small. Um, it does take some getting used to when you're looking for blind spots and visibility overall. One of the things I told you guys about was the body lines, and that's one of the things I really like about this specific car. I love the squared and rounded nature of this car, and that was one of the big reasons I went with this body style. I like how it flares out and how it goes thin again and how this back end really squares out so much so that I can even put my hand on it. I just love the way that this looks, and I really think that it is a really nice design that Chevrolet had with the fifth gen. I love how brutish this car looks and how aggressive it looks, and that's what really drew me to this specific body and, and this model. All right, guys, so there are a couple of imperfections I was telling you about, and the good news is, is that they're really easy to take care of and they're on the back. So right here, there's a little ding that I'm gonna have to get taken care of, and we're gonna replace this strip and this SS badging. 
but there's also a burn hole here in this bumper which is not a big deal at all we're going to take this bumper off and we're going to replace it with a modified piece at a later date so these are not big issues at all they don't affect the way that the backup sensors work so everything works well uh, the owner before me did smoke out the tail lights and i thought that was really cool and they also added a few other accents that i thought were really cool as well the previous owner did plastic dip the wheels and I don't hate it, I don't love it, and I think it's fine until I actually decide which wheel package I wanna go with once I decide how we're gonna go with the motor and what mods we're gonna do there to get the power that I'm looking for. Then we can focus on wheel and tire packages. Here's the big part, and here's the most expensive part. This is the engine bay, and as you can see, it's really clean, so the previous owner did love this car, which I'm really excited about. It did come with a cold air intake, and then there's the power plant, which is the L99. Now, the L99 in this specific generation came with the automatics, and the LS3 came with the uh, five-speed, uh, or the manuals, if you will. They're, they're very different. Uh, one of the big downsides of the L99 that I didn't know, but I know now from forums and things of that nature, is that it does have a four-cylinder mode and it has some other things with the VVT that will need to be deleted for the kind of power gains that I'm looking to, to, to make with this car. But overall, it's a really good platform, I think, and I'm really excited to build it. So at the end of the day, did it make sense and is it worth it for me to start working on this car in 2020? This car is almost 10 years old and there are a lot of cars that I could have gotten, Mustangs, you name it, that would have given me a lot easier path to the horsepower gains probably that I'm expecting to get. I think this car has a lot of character. I think this car is going to be a lot of fun to build and I really like the look and design of this car, you know, as a keeper. Um, this is one of those cars, you know, as I get older, I start thinking about things I want to keep and I really feel like this will be one of those cars that I want to keep and hold on to the rest of my life. And I think that's what I was searching for and that's what I'm planning to build. Please subscribe, like this video, let me know what you think in the comment sections, let me know any suggestions as we start to get this build underway and be looking forward to future videos. You guys take care, have an amazing day and I'll see you next time.